Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is an excerpt from my chat with Holly where I answered a bunch of your questions and Holly's questions too. I hope that this resonates with you. If it does, don't forget to smack the like button and subscribe to join our community and also join our Discord where we continue this conversation. So like the biggest question that came up multiple times on every page you sent was how do you feel about OnlyFans and would you even create a safe for work OnlyFans? I got a lot of things to say. Hi, I'm Holly. I edit for Kristen and I'm here to ask her a couple questions so we can get to know her. Holly, thank you so much for agreeing to do this. I appreciate that. Describe your perfect weekend. Waking up, no alarm. I started doing this thing when I have an alarm when to go to bed, not when I wake up. And I just make sure that it's like eight hours before I want to get up. Sleep is so important. So I would say waking up without an alarm, laying in bed a little bit, like maybe some morning loving, self-pleasure, sex with Luke, cuddling animals, and then doing some breath work, some meditation. After journaling, affirmations, uh, doing some reading on a book that's like really enticing me and then going for a walk with Yuri or hiking getting out in nature hugging a tree I just love like I know this is a weekend But like my life is just so blended with like work and play But I love getting into meetings and just like channeling my ideas So I've been writing a lot of the different ideas that have been coming through me different software things that I want to create and build different ideas for podcasts or for a women's network and then yeah, just like uplifting me Meetings, cooking, I love cooking lately, going for a swim if it's available, if I'm in Miami, you know, if it's warm. I love swimming, spending some time in the sun, doing more reading, listening to podcasts, watching YouTube videos, just hanging out with friends. Like my favorite thing in the world is having conversations like this with like you, Holly, even though this is like very one-sided right now, but just like when I'm talking to somebody and like they kind of get it, you know, and they can keep up with like different ideas and philosophies and even better if we can challenge each other's ideas too. I love that. Eating good food, dancing, lots of dancing. So I love day parties. I love dancing on boats. I love dancing at nightclubs. And now that I don't drink, like I can just dance all night and I don't get hung over and I'm like, wow, this is really great. Like Luke and I, there's this place called Space in Miami. So it's open like 24 hours. We would wake up at 3 a.m. for their headlining set at 4 a.m. and Sunday morning. And then we would go to the club and then we would go and dance the all the morning of Sunday and then Luke would usually go back to bed and then I would just do my yoga flow. So then we'd walk past this church and I'm like, this is like my ideal Sunday service. <laughs> just like dancing maybe like take a couple micro doses and just like feeling the connection to the mushrooms and the music and my body and the people then watching the sunrise come up on my walk home starting my day i was like this is perfect weekend People want to know, where is Luke now? Yeah, Luke is in Los Angeles right now. So he's just been working and traveling. And we took a little bit of space, which was like much needed for both of us because we've spent the last two years together every single day, all the time. And it's just good to detox your energy from people once in a while. I don't know, we go through a lot of stress because we never know where we're living. We're bouncing around constantly. We've been living out of a suitcase for two years and it's just been excessive. <laughs> so. Um, but I'm seeing him this week and I'm like actually excited to see him, which is really nice because I think we just we're just too close. Mm, okay, I, I feel that. <laughs> can relate. Yeah, I can relate. Lived with a partner 10 years. Wow, Holly, good for you. What, how, what do you guys do for space? We're really good. Like if we're not vibing to like hang out tonight, then we'll both go do our own things and like there's no hard feelings at all. That's nice. Having that kind of communication and allowance is so important. How did you get so free in your skin? I think one of the biggest things is just like accepting myself and doing a lot of mirror work. You go and you stand naked in front of the mirror and like, and I do like vagina mirror work too. You put your legs in like this and you put your mirror between your legs. I did this when I was like young. I read about it like a long time ago and I was in like my teens. And then I just do it every like year since. Just reacquaint myself. But the freedom of my skin just comes from validating myself. I still don't think I'm all the way there. I'm on the path <laughs> somewhere. Understanding that 
We only ever know ourselves and we can know others through their reaction to us to a degree, but other people's reaction of ourselves is only relative to who they are. Like what kind of generational trauma are they carrying with them? Like what, how were they raised? How do they feel in life? Do they feel like they're fucking the shit out of life right now? Like if not, then they're probably gonna have a different type of reaction to you. And like, did they eat that day? Are they hungry? Like all these little factors that we don't control contribute to people's perspective of us. So I have like this new mantra that I came up with. It probably already exists, but it's like, I am not responsible for other people's projections of me. And you can't be. Like I've tried to be my whole life and a lot of my streaming career was like, how can I please everybody? Like, I don't want to alienate anyone. I want everyone to feel like they can come and feel loved and appreciated in my stream and my chat. Like we don't talk about religion and the government and sports because I don't want to alienate anyone. And I want to be brand friendly, you know? I don't want to talk about psychedelics and sex because I don't want people to think like I've lost my mind you know and all these things that like literally like shut down my like throat chakra like I was like not feeling good I would lose my voice all the time because I wasn't speaking my truth and that's all we can do <laughs> is like embody and speak our truth and so when you're not responsible for anyone else's perspectives of you and you get to that resonant frequency between your heart body, mind, soul, like your entire spirit. And you have that understanding of like, actually, like I did this exercise recently, which again, all these things are coming up in my meditation for me to do. And then I just do them and I feel so great. But it was to write down who my ideal self is. Like, what is my higher self? Like, if you believe that there's within us a woman or man or they that has lived this life, has experienced it all and is just fully embodied, powerful, royal being. Like write down all the list of those qualities. I wrote down how I would treat them. Like if they were a partner or if it was me, like how would I treat them? Like what would I dress them with? How would I bathe them? How would I touch them? How would I speak to them? And the next step of that is you are already that. Just as easy as you can fake being confident in the moment, you can be that person now. And that is actually more true to you than the layers of societal conditioning and media messaging that we are inundated with constantly. I think of it like sunglasses. Like you might have a million pairs on, but we can start removing a few of them. <laughs> and like remove the sunglasses and then start to see yourself clearly. Maybe I am a little bit creative. Maybe I can learn that quickly. There's aspects of me that are beautiful. What are these things? And so start to see yourself in reality, like your reality, your truth, and not what teachers have told you or that one kid, like how many voices do we have in our heads of like a volatile kid in middle school who fucking said something to us and we let that live in our head. Even though we know now that we were out of our minds in high school, that person's probably apologized. <laughs> You know what I mean? But we let that live. And so we just have to take those voices out and be like, you are not me. You are not true. You're not serving me. I love you. Like, thank you for hanging out with me for so long. Like, you can love it. Like, you shitty little voice. Love you. Like, you protected me. You kept me safe. But I'm safe now. I'm taking care of myself now because I'm that strong, protective provider, lover, fucker, whatever you want to be. <laughs> like I am that now and so be that step into that become that and then treat yourself as that does the god in you take a shower with eucalyptus in the shower Ooh, like do you do like oil massages every morning like I, every time I massage my skin I like go I love you wrist I love you forearm I love you elbow I love you bicep <laughs> <laughs> like literally go through and just speak love to my body like the same way that when we speak love to water it forms these beautiful crystalline patterns under a microscope and when you speak hate or negativity it forms these like stagnation and like ugly formations like when you're speaking love and beauty into your body and into your friends and into your life and the air around you like you will see a shift in everything it's like so powerful <sighs> so that's how i feel confident in my skin and then it's just a practice and patience so it's like you don't need to be all 
all the way there like what if you just accepted exactly where you are now what triggered your like spiritual awakening i mean i'm in a perpetual state of awakening it's like a f f f f f f f the glasses are just like flying off me the infinite amount of sunglasses we wear to like see a new reality what triggered it? My first awakening happened when I was 14 years old. My mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. I remember getting out of the car, we were driving to a horse show and we were in this city called Hope. She got the news that she was positive and I was just like hit like a truck of bricks. That was like the only time, like, <laughs> like I really had to deal with like those that kind of news and it just spun me out and it's like what can I do for her? What can I do for her? What is death? What if she dies? And so she kind of had this like renaissance like she was doing all the chemotherapy and everything But she did the holistic healing and got into meditation and spirituality and she really resonates with Jesus like that's her Christ consciousness figure and so she kind of went down this path and I was observing her and I ended up shaving my head I raised ten thousand dollars for the where you get radiation and chemotherapy center and they like added new furniture and stuff like that with it which was great just to make it more comfortable for people going through chemotherapy and i had a bald head and so that was like a whole awakening in me where it's like oh, you know, i can't you don't realize like how much you hide behind your hair especially in grade 10 when i did it and it's <laughs> so crazy that was just like my like crumble like grasping onto like life and how do I help and what is my role and how do I how can I be a good daughter and then that was kind of this moment when I started to getting introduced to like meditation and I started meditating then so I was really lucky to understand now this this meaning of like I am not my mind I am my awareness perceiving the mind and at any point I can break the mind and so I started to have this cultivation and I took it kind of seriously but not very seriously and then when I was 20 I got very depressed and I was in university I was studying biomedical sciences and organic chemistry and I was on this path to be the best daughter I possibly could for my dad he's a doctor I wanted to please him and I wanted to follow in his footsteps like he had just groomed me to just be like a little mini genius like he sent me to private schools he would do all the like taught me calculus when I was like nine, like all these things, because he was expecting me to be this powerful surgeon or whatever. <laughs> and then I was like, I am so depressed. I also, upon reflecting, learned that I have ADHD to a degree where I don't need to study. I never learned to study. And so I would get straight A's in everything I did. I would barely show up to class. When I was there, I'd barely pay attention. I'd have to read a textbook once and I'd get a 4.0. I also have a photographic memory. And so I was stuck being like, okay, I'm now in organic chemistry 350 or whatever. And while I was able to use my <laughs> intelligence to get me through the first two sections of organic chemistry, now that I'm in my third and I actually need to study because the cramming that I did the year before, I'm not remembering. Like my labs were great, but like actual just like condensing of information and studying and retention was gone. And I, I could not focus. And so I got really depressed. And I was like sleeping around, drinking like four or five nights a week. And I was just so fucking sad. I was like drinking NyQuil before I went to bed every night. It was bad. Like I just didn't want to be awake. I didn't want to be alive. I contemplated suicide a lot, which is like so depressing to me to think about now because like I don't even, that state in my body now doesn't even like, that energy doesn't even touch me now. <laughs> If you're feeling like that now, there will be a time when you can feel like this. My awakening came through that, where it was just the pinch of pain. And it was it was not really one moment, but it was just like a series of things and YouTube videos. I used to watch this girl named Leia on YouTube and she started talking about love and spirituality and like interconnection and meditation. I read the book, A New Earth, Eckhart Tolle. I read some Deepak Chopra books and I was like, wow, okay, gratitude, meditation, awareness. And so I became celibate for a year. 
<laughs> like when I when I quit things, I really quit things. And so like, yeah, I quit drinking, I quit having sex, and I just started my spiritual journey. Like just out of pure, like if I'm gonna live, <laughs> I have to do this. So I started that journey. You know, I signed up for hot yoga challenges. I would go to yoga every day. I would do my journaling. I switched my studies from organic chemistry into commerce. So I was studying um, accounting and finance. And I was like, okay, I'm on the path. Like I'm kind of listening to what I want to do. I've always been interested in business and economics and things like that. But um, so I switched to that and just the journaling YouTube videos. I connected with an ex of mine, Colby, bless his heart. And he kind of put me on more of like the conspiracy path with like aliens and chemtrails and like those types of communities, but also onto like shows like Spirit Science and like the Emerald Tablets and like the Arcturians and the Pleiadians. And I got introduced to kind of like these multidimensional, as I view them now, kind of consciousnesses and like different energetics that we can tap into. And so I went a little bit deep end, but again, all rafts, we take our rafts to the island and then we load the rafts down and then we're there. Um, so that was my spiritual awakening when I was 21, 20. And after a year of being celibate and working on myself, I finally, I called my mom and I was like, mom, I can say I finally love who I am and I finally feel like I don't need anyone else to complete me and I feel whole and I love who I am and what I'm creating and what I'm being in this life and like to go from like especially if you're young and you're watching this to go from like the amount of self-hatred self-doubt like conflicting messages that we receive from the media and social media constantly to like, oh my God, I'm enough, I'm whole, I'm love, I'm worthy of love. And a week later I met my uh, my partner, <laughs> not my current partner, but Glenn, who you guys have probably met. And we dated for six years and he totally like healed, like I was like so abused in relationships before that. I was cheated on so many times and he like showed me like all about unconditional love, all about commitment, all about tolerance, appreciation, and like a true partner. And like, I just like, I love him from like the bottom of my heart forever, but I, we just grew in different ways. The bright side of a spiritual awakening is like, you can get to a place where you're feeling so good that you can align with a partner that is also feeling so good and is so fucking cool and then grow together. Like physically I felt better, intellectually I felt better. And then that led me to streaming. During my year of celibacy, I found Twitch. I have a system for how to find your purpose. So you should check out that video. And I did that and that worked for me. So yeah, and then I feel like I've gone through like three spiritual awakenings <laughs> since then. <laughs> And it's just from like after two years of streaming, I had an absolute loss of identity where I was just like, I hate this. Why? Like I'm burning out constantly. I'm not happy. I'm not satisfied. This is not interesting to me. And then I would quit and then I go dormant. I go quiet I become a hermit for a while. And I just become really depressed. And I was drinking all the time. And I like was suicidal again. <laughs> I was just, like, came out of that again and then started streaming in a different trajectory. So, I mean, I think this is turning into be a bit of a pattern, but you know, my, my time of staying in that bliss state is longer. And then that transformational period, I don't go as low anymore. Like we can all deeply resonate with that feeling. And like, isn't that like the biggest desire to be able to like call your parents and not tell them that like you were promoted or tell them that you were <laughs> like, like even found a partner is to tell them that like, I genuinely, I'm happy. Like that's all your parents want you to be is like, I'm happy and I love myself. Like, thank you. Like, I'm gonna be okay. I mean, we come in and out, you know, I'm like, mom, I'm not okay. Okay, wait, no, mom, I'm okay again. <laughs> but I think that's just part of being a human, mm -hmm. so. And a woman, yeesh, just like monthly. <laughs> so like the biggest question that came up multiple times on every page you sent was, how do you feel about OnlyFans? And would you even create a safe for work OnlyFans? Here's the thing, okay? Let me start off by saying, I have been a prisoner to my own morals and ideals. And I lived and upheld the walls of, you cannot be sexy or sell sex or show sex and have future in business. 
And even though I would preach and speak about how I respect women who are in the sex industry and I respect women who sell photos and to use their beauty to get ahead or to make money, I respect and I love them, but I always felt like that was unavailable to me. And I'm not sure if it's like from the influence from my father or from society or just this lamenting of you can't get taken seriously even anymore once you do that. Even though I'm a person that takes them deeply seriously, right? Like I recognize beauty as just being another tool that we have in our toolbox that people can access and our sexuality. Like what is it, the oldest occupation of all time is sex work and I respect it. I would hire it. I see the absolute genius in people that do it, like Amaranth and other top OnlyFans creators. And so even though I can see it, I still have this fear around others taking me seriously and my opportunities in the future, whether it's for VC funding for an idea I have, getting respect from the networks of the men or women that I might need in order to have something launched or created or just limit my opportunities. And I think that has been the case in the past and I was a little bit burned when a few years ago Intel stopped working with me after I did a Playboy photo shoot. Uh, apparently it was like a few of the women on the executive management team were just like blacklisted me, even though it was non-nude. It was just in lingerie. It was like very sexy and it was very like luxury too. It was like all kind of Dita Monti style. It was, it was really fun. I was like, oh, wow, that was a really cool experience. And I love it. I love being sexy. I love being sexual. I love sharing that. I love like enticing and teasing and pleasing. Like that really comes from a deep, loving, healthy place in me. And so I think with the OnlyFans thing, it's like the value that I would receive financially from doing OnlyFans, does that outweigh the potential upside of the possibility of opportunities for me in the business, commerce, Web3 world? So it's this catch-22 where we need women and men who respect women and men who do sex work or who sell photos or whatever, do, whatever you want to label it as to start companies <laughs> and let their people who work for them flow and invest in ideas of everybody. You know, we need to have the money to invest. We need to have the ideas to start. We need to have the businesses to lead and to hire from in order to set an example to the other men and women who might view that toxically still. That's happening. And I want to be one of those people. <laughs> and so can I become one of those people by doing OnlyFans? And can I become one of those people without doing OnlyFans? So I think it's an idea that pops into every woman's mind when they see the amount of money available. I had an idea to start a website where it was NFT nudes and you could buy like specific photos and collect them. And if you collected all of them, they would put together the full nude that you could see. And I've had a lot of ideas around NFTs and sexy photos. Uh, and I've talked to a few developers and other guys who have started companies with it and they've ran with different ideas, like more like the NBA pop shot and things like that. But I think there's room for that too. And especially like with crypto subscriptions, like I would love to do my own platform and it just be not just about me looking great in lingerie and bikinis and having fun videos and photo shoots, but also these are the secrets to my life. This is why I'm happy all the time. Here's my breath work. Here's this recipe that I made. Have you read this book? Let's do a book club. Let's do this. Let's like be more all encompassing because anytime that I've niched myself down to like only one thing, and I think this is true for every single person, it's like you become confined by it and trapped by it. So I think that there is a future where I have a subscription that's done with crypto <laughs> and it's my own hosted website where I control the rev share and um, I share the things that I'm interested in and I can never get to platforms <laughs> and it's a safe place for us to share and to communicate and interact as a community. And I also have some other app ideas around that too. So if you're a developer and you're fluent in this kind of thing, reach out to me. I can see the pros and cons of OnlyFans so much, but I know like Holly Madison, she's like famous for like a multitude of things, but like the Playboy being a big one, but she runs like empires and has an OnlyFans. So like, she's like a good expander that it's possible and it's a non-lewd OnlyFans too. 
I think my fear is just the title, you know? And so it's like, how many people are willing to do the research into the fact that your OnlyFans is non-nude, you know? And then even with Fan House, like I know people still do like very lewd things. And it's like, I, ha I have this stigma, which I'm working to remove. And, and I think I've kept it since the old days of listening to like CSGO Neats talk to me about how I shouldn't use my beauty. Who am I to get others to like pay me money for being me, <laughs> you know? And this idea that like I'm selling out. So that's why it became easier to just not worry as much about my Twitch subscribers and my donation revenue and switch to all brands, which is where like, you know, in my opinion, it's like the most selling out. But at the same time, I wasn't having to take from my community, which I now see that it's actually like this really cool exchange of value where when I subscribe to people, I'm really proud of my subscription and I'm proud of supporting them and I'm proud of being part of their group. And I rock that, you know? Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to spank that thumbs up button and subscribe and check out my Discord where we explore these topics in more depth and you might find other people who are interested in these things too, which is all that I'm ever looking for in life. So come on and join. I'll see you there. Have a great day. Bye.